So this is the shade house. In other places that I farmed, Oregon, California, and where a lot of people garden or farm, you need a greenhouse or hoop house. Here, it gets so darn hot and so sunny, so early in the season, you need a shade house. So this is built a lot like a hoop house might be. Now here is what we did, is we just copied this design. This is a grape arbor. Notice that it's got two posts in the ground about, I don't know, four feet apart. And then you've got along the sides, well, no, just over the top, you've got uh, cattle panels, they call them. They're used for fencing or for gates in other contexts. They're bent over and then kept in place, as you can see with wire. So it's a simple, pretty, pretty simple, easy thing to build with, uh, you need two people to bend it over. So we did the same thing here, and then we covered it with shade cloth. And the rope going over the top there is to keep it from flopping around too much. Otherwise, it's held in place with clips. So we'll take a look inside. It's nice to come in here on hot days, that's for sure. So lots going on in here. This, the, these right here are tomatoes. These are a special kind of tomato called currant tomatoes. C-U-R-R-A-N-T, currant, like the berries, because they make small currant-sized tomato fruit. These are from Adaptive Seed Company in Sweet Home, Oregon. Never tried growing them before. Nikki wanted to get them because she believes that they might actually rewild in this part of the world really well. That sounds great to me down on the ground. We've got different projects going on here with trees. These are apples, seedlings that came up. Here's some cuttings we're trying to get going. In the back here, in these trays, these, this is camas. So this is not just farming stuff here. This is for wild tending activities as well, because the idea, these are have pawpaw seeds in them that we're still hoping are going to come up. There's a fig. So the idea is that these are going to get planted out, you know, in the wild someplace. Uh, which is to say, in an uncultivated area, not an agricultural area, not a city. Ah, uh, that's some Ella campaign right there. Herbalists will recognize that one. This is a red walnut. I'm hoping more come up. This just came up last week after watering them every day for months and months and months. This one finally sprang up, so hopefully some more will come up. This is a walnut from a walnut orchard in Lake County, California, from an organic orchard where this is like an heirloom kind of walnut. And the flavor is definitely different than your regular walnut. I liked it better. And we knew the owner and we... Um, harvested some walnuts there and, and took some away to plant. And yeah, it's pretty exciting that this one's gotten going. And these, I believe are almonds. Yeah, these are almonds. So multiple seeds were put in these pots to see if anything would come up and they'll be separated later. So here I had planted, filled this all up with um, grape, grape mash. So I harvested a bunch of grapes that I really liked from an island park, also in Lake County, California. And it was an island park in Clear Lake. This was a Concord type sweet eating grape. And as they have been coming up in here, I've been transplanting them into their own pots. That's about a hundred seedlings there. What am I gonna do with a hundred seedlings? Well, first of all, they're not all gonna make it. Secondly, some of them can get um, planted on this property for sure. And then again, this is also for wild, for wild tending, for putting them out in places that are non-agricultural, uncultivated. More tomatoes. Oh, check this out, Meg. There we go. We got some Zeus going here. Pretty happy about that. We'll get you some seeds. Wish I could get you a plant. Here's some Romas. So the Romas, uh, you know what Romas are. Zeus is a cherry tomato. This was a volunteer at the Fire Pit Garden, if some of you will remember that place in Portland, 2013. 
and it's a large size, like a plum-sized cherry tomato. did really well. So saved the seeds from that and been keeping it going. And the Roma has saved seed from our old farming efforts too, 2013. Here's some medicinals. This is marshmallow. Some mullein accidentally got mixed up in the marshmallow, so we'll put that in the ground soon. This is Osha. Some kind of Ligusticum, I believe. Not sure, we'll have to ask Nikki. She seeded this. Very nice to see that. We can see that she got the seed from Klamath Falls in Northern California. So, one thing we've got going on here is seed blocks. I don't know if you can see that these are, yeah, you can see that these are divided into blocks. So I'll show this to you in another video, but we have a soil block maker. This is lettuce that's coming up. If you can see the tiny little babies in here, this is lettuce. This is a mix of wild, this is a mix of uh, different lettuce varieties from Wild Garden Seed, that same company. And this one I've been keeping covered because the seeds wanted to be See, I just put the seed blocker makes these blocks and then it puts a little hole in the top, a little divot in the top of each block. So the seeds just go in the divot. And you're not supposed to cover them, which seems strange to me, especially since these seeds are so big. This is for giant kohlrabi right here. And so notice that I put uh, this on top to keep it dark. In the absence of the seeds being covered, I put this on the top to keep it dark until it, until it, um, until they germinate. You can also see that I took some trays here and put saran wrap on them just to keep them moist. Again, it's so dry here, it's hard to keep things moist. And these soil blocks are awesome because you're not using plastic. You've got all these places, but you can't just water it with the hose. That'll wash them away, that'll dissolve them. You need to use the mister setting on, this, on the hose, which is kind of tricky and yeah, they want to dry out fast. So here's more soil blocks. And here I've got these covered up with plastic to keep them going. Here we're mostly still waiting for things to come up. Celeriac, celery, celery leaf, chard. Maybe you can see a tiny little chard that's coming up there. This is Daga, if you know that. Clip Daga. Leonotus nepetifolia. Uh, Spolanthes. The Spolanthes is just starting to come up as well, known as toothache plant. Um, summer savory. Summer savory is an annual herb, cooking herb that I've never grown before. Then we've got some salad burnet. We've got some epizote, cause eating lots of beans. And epizote is an herb that's used with beans to give them a nice flavor and to help cut down on the gassiness of them. Clever. So that is the shade house. It needs to be watered at least once a day. Nice place to hang out when it's hot. And yeah, very different than the whole greenhouse thing, that's for sure. Shade house.